Well, looky who we found here. Hop out, John. <laughs> Looks like it's time to talk about this bad boy. So, anyone who's anybody who's in the Bronco scene, who's into off-roading, who's uh, uh, been to any of the wild horse events, the Northwest Roundup, uh, everybody has seen this Bronco. I mean, it is everywhere on the internet, across the United States, across the world. Um, and we've had it in and out of our shop quite a few times through all the stages of your build. And it just so happens it's back for a few more adjustments. And guess what? It's 12 rigs of Christmas. <laughs> and guess what? It, there isn't another vehicle that we've worked on uh, that represents Christmas and giving and hope and cheer and everything, uh, be, you know, more than this Bronco. Um, so what year is this Bronco, John? 1972, so and it's an original half cab. You, you bought it with the half cab on it? Yes, sir. Uh, and you bought it in about 2008 with your son, right? Uh, be very, it would be uh, the tail end of seven or yeah, beginning of eight. Somewhere in that time. And, and you went down to where to get this? Sonora. So you and your son hopped in the truck looking for a project. He's 15 years old. Uh, you go down to Sonora, you walk in. Was there any chance that you were going to leave without taking the Bronco home? Man, I wanted to leave when I was pulling up the driveway. It was like raining, like I can't tell you. And this thing from 100 feet away could tell that it was rolled, carnage, rotted, rusted. But guess what? He wanted it, right? It was an original half cab, and that was important. So this is how every rebuild, father stun, uh, anybody's project starts with you, pro you usually get something you shouldn't buy you buy it anyway and you embark on the journey right yep um so you got that thing home and you and your son just went to work on this thing right yeah we we got it off the trailer i mean it was sonora on top to grass valley the driver's side floorboard fell out it was so rusted out you look at things like how cool it looks with the cab on and you know that you found it and you forget to look at the details like body mounts and knock on fenders everything else right my wife came out and she was like, just completely had nothing. She didn't know what to say. It's like, you gotta be kidding me. Anyway, hour and a half later, we had the body off of it sitting in the driveway. So this same story has happened across the United States, across the over world, and over. millions of times, right? So you guys spent a year just digging deep into this thing. And then uh, unfortunately, uh, just after 16 years old, he got to drive it, right? But your son passed away, right? Yeah. And so uh, at that point, uh, it's just, natural that look you continue the project right actually it went in the backyard for a year i didn't know what i was going to do with it and he had four really good friends come over old man time to bring it out so you guys went for it went after the project at this time your daughter was really young yeah um but she was out there helping too and from there on it's just Oh boy, it's snowballed. <laughs> Let me just tell you, it has snowballed. Uh, you know, there's so much to look at uh, look at on this thing. We're gonna try and cover a lot of it. I know that there's been quite a few videos on it already, but nobody's really gone into detail. So we're gonna talk about everything up top. Um, and then what we're also gonna talk about is the real meat and potatoes of the build, the engine, the transmission, the transfer case, and the axles. But uh, to start with, Let's just look inside because at, at any car show, anywhere you go, the interior is really the detail. So, so don't you uh, get in here, I'll get in here because you know you know what's in here. I think stuff's crazy in here. So as you can see, what is it? Your daughter's really big into patches, yep, right? Yep, she's collected every one of them. So is the Velcro on the back. So roll cage, wrapped, patches everywhere. You know, some patches like the original Coors patch, I really like. Um, but I mean, you start reading some of these things and your mind just goes crazy uh and every truck stop where do you get all these she finds them online there's I, I don't know my son had a lot of them she just acquires them so you have interior roll cage yes sir um you have sunroof in the half cab yep and it is really tight in here there's things you give up to have a half cab it's just like a scrambler with a half cab yep you know there's no space but that's the sacrifice you make to have a cool looking bronco right right um so these seats whose seats are these those are master crafts and then i noticed they're camo were you able to order them with the camo well actually we wound up going down to uh, wild horses this was the the seats were the the very first purchase my son made with his own money he was in the paintball heavy duty he wanted the camo seats the camo seats so, are still in there so to this that day is awesome that is awesome so master craft seat belts um, you got a tilt column here, removable steering wheel so you can get in and out of this damn thing. Um, 
all auto meter, auto meter gauges right up here above the steering wheel, which is different because the Bronco gauges are normally in the dash, but you yeah. got four six inch speakers in your dash. And a 12 inch subwoofer between the two seats and a special built cabinet in behind. You know, it's always important to have tunes. Yeah, know? yeah. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. And to be honest with you, the gauges down low are kind of hard to see right here. They're in your face, ready to go, right? right. Yep. So you have a Lowrance in here, Yep. Um, GPS, steering wheel hanger right there so you just grab it and pop it on huh yep i like that uh i noticed you have the full width wink mirrors up there yeah they're kind of handy because you can just without really adjusting or moving your head you can kind of see exactly what's to your right or to your left side up here that's the controller for the fitech fuel injection that we'll get into a little bit later right the controller's right here that's actually a backup camera okay so controller for fitech back oh yeah i mean you got so much crap here you can't see the back <laughs> up huh yeah everything's in the way i noticed you got a, a headset there do you wear that when you're driving it or just uh, when you're on a, an event where you could talk to people yeah when more more so when we're on events and different things like that and does this have a rugged radio as well yes it's got a rugged radio and it's got a cb radio well, where's the rugged in the CB? right to your left ear Le oh, okay. Okay, and I've CB got a CB here. down there, and then I've got rugged handheld uh, two and a half watt radios throughout. Just and so that's awesome. And here you got the eight inch Tuffy console, right? Yep. yep. Um, and then the uh, the old uh, Art Car shifter. Yep. Um, you got an Atlas with twin sticks in this thing, four three Atlas. Uh, I mean, everywhere you look, something is doing something. Something is something's functioning. Uh, there's a lot to look at, but it's all here. First aid kit underneath the uh, center console, and then you got a fire extinguisher right down there as well. Um, so you've pretty much thought about everything, right? Just you never know when you're going to need something or whatever. You mean like when you when you need a swivel beer holder? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, just we're trying to make this one PR, so we took the uh, Coors Light out of this one. You know, I already drank it. Uh, you even got one for the passenger, huh? Uh, gotta have it. Drink holder and uh, the oh shit uh, grab handles there. Yep. And one of my all time favorite parts in any Jeep or off-road vehicle, right there, the Levo gauge on the dash. So, you know, you always need something like that to tell you when you're just about to screw up, right? When you're in trouble, yes. It's never helped me. It's never I've helped me. I've always taken it past the, past the uh, point of no return. Um, anything else that really stands out inside this thing? You've kind of covered everything. It's it's gotten crazy over the years, and it continues to get crazy. I mean, everywhere you look, there's just switches and levers, and I mean, here's your battery shut off switches. What's this in out switch right here? That's for the rear uh, suck down. Oh, winch. it does have a rear suck down winch. That's really cool. So you just reach to your left and click on it. Yep. Yep. Phone holder in there. The ram mount for the phone holder. So, all right, John. We saw in the back. We saw inside. Let's uh, let's take a look under the hood here. Those are awesome hood latches. And they're lockable. Well, and before we open the hood, tell us about what you got going here. So this is a carbon fiber wrap. So it's a steel hood or is it No, it, it's a fiberglass hood. One yeah. of the things is the old hood was heavy and the struts and everything, and I couldn't repair it anymore. So fiberglass, fiberglass hood. Did a uh, carbon shock, fiber wrap. coming up through. You now, built all these. My son actually, before he passed away, he cut those in the driveway with the jigsaw. That's awesome. Yep. Um, and for winter time, I've got this made. This is a, a louvered panel underneath here. When we open it up, we'll show it from the bottom. Yeah. But so there's louvers here, and then there's actually a scoop here, but you block both of them off because when it's well, this morning, it was 28 degrees, and it'll keep the engine warm. More right? so for the rain. And for the rain, yeah. Yep. Well, let's look underneath this bad boy. Well, there she is. So tell us about this engine. This is what, the third engine in this Bronco now? Had the factory engine, which was the 302. I don't know. It was leaking. It was just wore out, tired. I had a 347 in it for, oh, probably three or four which years. Which the last time I drove it, it had the 347 in a four-speed manual. Yeah. And it, it sounded good, but it just didn't make it happen, did it? No. Now, yeah. this one is a Ford Performance Z460. And Which anybody can get this right from Ford Racing, right? Right, go right to Ford and, Racing, and it's a small block, 460 cubic inch. Yep, um, built on their Boss block, so not it is, on the 302 block, but on the on the 351 yep. Windsor block. Correct. Yeah. Okay. And do you know the approximate horsepower it has? Well, the engine they dyno these engines because they're their full blown race engines. 575 on a horse, 575 on a torque, just the long block. Yeah. Okay, so when we put it together, I put I did all this in the in the garage and in the barn at home. And that's another thing people don't get. You're you're doing most even the big mechanics work too. You're pulling the engines, you're putting the engines in. 
you've worked blood, sweat, and tears with you and the family on this. Yes. Nonstop. Yep, nonstop. Yep. So you you pulled this motor, you pulled the old motor out, put this one in. Yep. Yep. And, and then it used to have the the 347 had Fitec on it, fuel injection already, right? You, the old one had a Fitec unit on it, and hey, I got it fired up and it ran. It was okay. But Fitec came out with a new unit for guys with big stupid motors and raunchy cams. So anyway, have that. And yeah, this engine doesn't want to idle down to 700 RPM. You know, about 925 is about the lowest it I can get it. It sounds nasty though. That's got to be cam. I mean, holy moly. But I mean, it really runs good with this new system, right? We did some tweaks. We did some pushing, massaging, whatever. So to the rear wheel way more than what i need but i'm hitting 604 on the horse 617 on the torque to the rear wheels to the rear wheels holy cow yeah yeah that's insane and behind it is a 4r70w uh built to the hilt to handle with full manual valve body with a reverse full Re manual yes. valve body so you yep. have overdrive reverse full manual valve body and we put that transmission in for you yep uh took that old four speed granny low out and that just <laughs> woke this thing oh, up uh, um, unbelievable let's talk a little bit about what's going on in here so I mean, a lot of things happening. You got hydro boost brakes right there. Yep. Um, you were able to keep the Fitec underneath the hood with a standard air cleaner because of that bump up. And take a look, there's those louvers that are covered up right now. Uh, in the theme of KC, these are, are these the KC? Uh, rock lights. Rock lights, yep. So those are your under hood lights. Basically flip a switch right here on the grill and boom, KC engine bay on. And then one of the things that I really like about this is, you know, look at that wiring. So some people would buy a wiring harness and do it, but you literally wired this whole thing yourself, right? Yeah, and I suck at wiring. But you labor, you labeled every wire. It's like, it's wiring that you would see, you know, in the 90s, it has blade style fuses, but you know where everything is, where every wire goes and everything on the vehicle. So we started modifying stuff inside. The old fuse block used to be in the glove box. Yeah. Anyway, I took that, put it in a welding glove once I modified the upper dash and it rat rode underneath the dash for a long time. So if I blew a fuse, everyone yeah. was laughing at me. I had to pull this glove out. Anyway, finally pulled it out doubled up tripled up on all the fuses whatever they're right there i can see any, anything and everything so you, you keep looking underneath the hood here and you have uh, your shock towers very unique on this go all the way up through the hood um, because this thing has 18 inch travel shocks you got a strut bar that goes across um, Tell me what all that weirdness is over there. That looks like a line lock scenario, right? It, it's basically, it's a micro lock. It's what they put on the uh, uh, fork, uh, forklifts, tow trucks, different things like that. Yep. When I'm on a super, super steep incline, where if, if I need a parking brake, that's my parking brake right there. It, it's hydraulically- It's important to have an e-brake. And those are the best e-brakes out there to get, the micro lock. Hydraulically locks up all four corners. Yep. Um, this has PSC hydro assist steering in it, PSC well, we're about to put a PSC pump back on it. Um, that's the PSC reservoir. Um, does this thing overheat at all? I mean, Broncos always have such a small uh, spot in the engine compartment for the radio. So I've made some changes over the years from the 347 to this one here now. Ron Davis, he actually built this radiator for this rig. Uh, it was earlier, I guess earlier this year. And I've got a three inch body lift on here and I'm taking up every inch of the three inch body I lift. I see, if you take a look underneath here, the radiator actually drops all the way down below. It's almost hard to see, squeeze there past the winch. While you're there, look at that license plate. What's going on with your license plate there? So we're have, we were way back when having some heating issues. It's all so, about cooling, so yeah. you trim out the inside of the license plate there. My daughter, when she was 12, she did that. She wanted to take everything <laughs> to an extreme. Well, we won't tell California about that. <laughs> uh, that, that you know, that's not exactly street legal, if you know what I mean. But anyway, I ran this in 112 degree weather and it never had a, no yeah. heating issues. And that's whatsoever. also how tells you how good the engine's running as well, the proper air fuel mixture and everything. So. Yeah. Look at that, KC Daylighters up front. Uh, just a nice worn M8000 winch. Uh, and I do see that, like a lot of our other rigs, you got the Factor 55. Um, all the hardware. Uh, all the Factor 55 stuff, yep. And what about the headlights? What are these? I know they're LED. Th th those are uh, JW speakers. That's what I was thinking, JW speaker, yep. right? And make a huge difference at night going down the road. So uh, as far as the exterior of this thing, the paint and body work, uh, I know for the first 10 or 15 years I knew you, 
it was just all primed. Yep. Um, you finally got to the point, and this is what this is where a lot of people screw up. They start their projects. The first thing they do is go into paint and body, paint the thing, and then try and build it. And you did it exactly the way that I tell all of our customers to do it at home. Uh, is build the entire thing, make sure everything's functioning, make sure the tires don't rub, change the roll cage, change mirrors, do all the stuff that you need to do, drive it for a couple of years, and then you took it apart and painted it, right? Yep. yep. Yeah. So now all your metal work's done, you know, everything else finished up, right? Yep. Um, and, you know, one of the things that makes this stand out that, you know, wasn't there at first and then came in, and this is glad you didn't have it painted, is Tell us about these uh, louvers on the side, because you don't see that very often. So, you know, I'll get to Moab, I'll get to different places, and you know, the weather's hot. These power steering system, I mean, it throws out a lot of heat, plus the engine. I wanted the coolers outside of the engine bay. So, decided to mount them up here. I've got them on two bolts, so if I need to service anything, they'll drop right down. But So your power steering coolers are right here. One on each side. One on each side. Yep. So they're not just for looks, they're full function. Full function. Yep. And it's amazing how much heat they put out. And these are steel Bronco fenders. Yep. Yep. And then what cutouts did you use uh, to fit the 40s? The yep. Gorilla uh, Warfares from uh, Wild Horses. So he's got those on front and the rear because Bronco bodies are hard to fit 40s and it took a lot to get it in here. Well, and even on the rear, the, uh, the inner uh, wheel tubs, I had to take two split them, weld them together, because, I mean, normally that rear wheel tub is a lot, lot n narrower. And where did you do that at? at in the barn. Because you, so, but you opened the opening up. Well, the did. opening was open, but it was actually the inner tub here. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, because yep. it, it would normally drop down right about here and drop down right about so there. So you stretch the inner structure. Yep, so yep. I could stuff the tires. I like that. I like it a lot. Um, well, I'll tell you what I think we're going to do. Uh, I want to show the real meat and potatoes and where we came into play on your project. The front axle, the rear axle, the suspension. Um, I think we want to drive this thing down to the shop. We'll put it on jack stand so we can really see it and uh, we'll show off the suspension. Alright, well, as you can see, we decided to do this portion of the video with her shoes off. Um, and we felt that that was the best way to do it because Everybody's seen this on the internet. Everybody knows this Bronco, but nobody really knows the, uh, you know, what's underneath, you know. And so that's where WFO comes in because we did, what did we do for you, John? We did uh, yeah. axles, everything, axles, suspension, all the chassis work, drivetrain, put, you know, the first transmission, then the second transmission, then the Atlas in. Um, so it's kind of morphed, but where it's ended up is absolutely perfect. It's over um, the top. So we'll start from the rear and kind of show you from the rear front. Um, so if you come around the back and look underneath this, so that is a big banjo Ford nine inch housing. So John really wanted to keep it Ford underneath here. So this is what, this is a full width housing, which you would find um, like on a 78, 79 Ford F-150. Um, and this is actually a Curry housing that they made for it. So stronger housing, um, stronger tubes. Now. What isn't normal about this is we built this custom truss all the way from front to back. Um, and then we also added full floater Dana 60 spindles to it. So while you're underneath here, you can see there's John's suck down winch we talked about earlier. Uh, goes right to the back of the diff. And you can also kind of look up top and see uh, his upper link. So this has a dual triangulated forelink with FK Heim joints. And those upper links are inch and a half quarter wall uh, with FK Himes, basically there are 7878s seven with our 5.8s misalignment spacers. Um, you can see right here, air bumps on both sides, King air bumps to go along with the King shocks. So let me walk over here to this corner and uh, I'll get my shadow out of the picture and we'll talk a little bit about, more about what's going on here because something untraditional is we got a full float wheel hub right here. So the guys over in the diff shop and Alan went ahead and welded Chevy, or actually they're uh, big bearing Ford Dana 60 rear spindles onto the nine inch housing, fixtured it up. These are Dana 60 eight lug wheel hubs. Um, and then something we just did, Alan did over in the diff shop, is we modified it and made the wheel wood brakes fit on there with four piston rear wheel wood calipers. And the blue goes great with the King and everything else. So this has a one piece flange, 35 spline chromoly Yukon axle shaft, 
um, going through this housing and it, and it, and it measures uh, 69 inches wide at the wheel mount surface. So it's a nice wide rear nine inch, fully trussed. You can see the air bump. We built some air bump uh, brackets there. Um, and then one of the real important things here is the rear sway bar. So this is not a small, you know, spline sway bar. This is a 35 spline bar. Um, we got this from CarTech. This is the uh, Cal Prefund arms. These are built aluminum. And then we went ahead and built this outer piece here to double shear. And it has three quarter five eighths heim joints uh, on the sway bar drop down. So everything way overkill and beefy. And this is the key to making a Bronco handle good with trailing arms or a dual triangulated four link. So that leads me into obviously the favorite part of this build. Uh, this is a custom set of trailing arms that uh, we built here in the shop, Kevin designed for John's rig. Um, as you can see, King two and a half inch shocks. So this front shock is a two and a half by 12. And then the rear shock is a triple bypass two and a half by 14. Uh, this thing has approximately uh, 18 to 20 inches right at the wheel of wheel travel, which is insane out of a short wheelbase Bronco. Um, once again, on both ends of the control arms, FK Himes with our misalignment spacers, tube inserts, everything. Uh, John did went with the best on everything. Got our limit straps in here. Um, if you sneak in behind the limit strap, you can see the third member. So that's another really cool thing about this build. So this has a mega high nine with 488 gears and it has ARBs front and rear. Uh, the key to making this thing drive and handle good is uh, having the ARB in the rear. It doesn't have any click, bang, or push, you know, like you'd have with the Detroit Locker. Um, the rear driveline is a 1350 CV rear driveline, and he has a spare one up underneath the rig. And then it also has a 4.3 Atlas mounted behind that 4R70E. Um, as you can see, when you got a short wheelbase Bronco, the damn link mounts all almost come together. Um, got a really nice clean skid plate belly pan. Uh, I believe actually back in the day, Mitch built that cross member uh, when we mounted in this Atlas. And then if you look on the other side, you can see the upper link mount up on the inside of the frame. That is our inside the frame link mount that you can buy off the website for seven eight time joints. Um, we'll start working our way to the front here. And the front is something that we like to do on a lot of rigs, as you guys know. Um, we went ahead with a radius arm setup. Uh, and the reason we did the radius arm setup is you got short wheelbase, you got a lot of weight up high. Uh, it's fairly tall being on 40s and Broncos just inherently do not handle well on the road. Uh, they do great off-road, but they tend to be tippy on the road. Well, a factory Bronco had a radius arm, right? They did it for a reason. Calculated amount of bind, as I like to say. So take a look here. You got uh, one of our Duraflex joints up at the frame to take any vibrations out. You work your way down the radius arm. It's a two inch quarter wall lower link and then inch and a half quarter wall upper link with a seven eighths heim right here. Now at the axle, those are our radius arm brackets that just have Delrin bushings down in the pockets. You can see the, the air bump hits right on the upper radius arm, which is kind of nice because when it hits this upper link, you also have uh, the polyurethane of the link dampening that noise and sound. Um, as you see in the front, there's something completely awkward about these shocks. And that is the fact that come up on top here, they're sticking through the hood. So we don't normally build with that tall of a shock. It's hard to get the suspension to function, to get the driveline to actually droop out that much where it matters. But John says, you know what? I don't care, you're putting these shocks in. And these are, believe it or not, these are 18 inch travel King coilovers. I mean, the body stops all the way down here. So all the way up through the hood, we got it at a decent ride height with a ton of travel using the 18 inch shocks. We wouldn't normally do that. Um, so this has a custom front end that we also built for them. So this front axle started its life as a Dana 60 in the front of a van conversion. So we brought it in here. And as you can see right here, we have reed knuckles, and read C's. So the boys over in the diff shop cut the C's off, got new knuckles, new C's, and uh, we welded them on. So this is a 69 inch wide, and believe it or not, a low pinion Dana 60. Um, 
and it has our crossover arm. We put PSC Hydro Assist on it. We built the track bar bracket as well, get all the angles to match. Um, it, you know, in, in, in able to keep everything uh, flowing well and fitting right, we left the tie rod down on the knuckles, just went on top of the knuckle, and then put the ram right above it. And then you got your drag link and track bar. So it really made it um, easy for us to get everything in here and fit it by leaving the tie rod down here. And it doesn't seem to be a problem because this rig has gone over the Rubicon, gone to Moab, and it's still making it. Um, much like the, much like the rear, uh, just lately, the boys went ahead and put these brakes on. So we have in the front um, six piston wheel wood disc brakes, and then spider tracks hats and rotors, and we built a custom mount to fit that in there. Um, if you come over here and look from the side, you'll see that even though it has a low pinion Dana 60 in it, the driveline angle is perfectly lined up. And that's because when we put the new C's on it, we rotated the pinion up a ton. I think it's about 15 degrees rotated up. Now you can only do that when you're putting new C's on so you can give it good caster. So we run about six degrees caster in this because it's short wheelbase and it has hydro assist steering so that it can drive good down the road. As you can see, he has a Wild Horses power steering conversion in here. Um, pretty simple, Heim joints on all the steering components, all FK rod ends. Um, just a really great functioning suspension setup. One of the things we did on this a while back, and you'll notice that this is not a standard yoke, there's a flange on that. Uh, and it also has a long slip front drive line. So back uh, five years ago or so, uh, when it had the Dana 44 in it, the low pinion of the Dana 44 was not turned up and it had a lot of suspension travel and the drive line would actually bind when it droops out, right? So we do this a lot. We really like that the Toyota flange and the long ears of the Toyota U-joint can actually get about 42 degrees of angle. So this rig at full suspension travel, no U-joint bind in any of the drive lines. And we hate to say we put Toyota parts on a Bronco, but you know, we're taking the good stuff they made and making it work for us. Um, other than that, uh, there's not much to say about the suspension. Trailing arm rear, triangulated upper, uh, radius arm front, has a sway bar in the rear. No sway bar needed in the front due to the radius arms. Now, if you three link it, you would have to have a sway bar to get this thing to drive good on the road. But with the radius arms, with the calculated amount of bind, this thing handles great on the road handles great uh, on other trails. In fact, John's just sitting here in the back. All right, so the reason I really wanted to show the suspension and axles of your rig is to let people know that this is not just a car show rig, is it? No, we use it. He uses it and he drives it to the events. Um, what are some of the events you've taken this to? We've been to Buena Vista, Colorado to the Super Celebration, Bronco Supercell. We've been to Moab, Bronco Safari. You've taken it on the trails in Moab? Yes. And I personally, no, you ran all the way through the Rubicon in this thing. As it is, no dents, no dings. No, nope. you know. We got a few scuffs underneath, but my daughter Sophie again, she fixes that right up. But no body damage. So a lot of people can build a, a nice looking Bronco, and early Bron Broncos are famous for this, right? Uh, great paint job, great interior, great gauges, engine sounds good. Run it through Barrett Jackson, but it has. You know, those Broncos have 28 spline rear axle shafts. They have Model 30 front ends. They have, uh, you know, uh, drum brakes front and rear. I've, I've seen a $100,000 Bronco with drum brakes front and rear, you know, and this is not that. This checks off every single box. Ready to go four wheeling, ready to drive down the freeway, ready to take your lady out to dinner, valet park it, you know, everything. Before I got to the point, I got hooked up with you guys and you guys got me pointed in the right direction. I mean, I had the 40s on it. I did a bunch of crazy stuff and nothing was working. I mean, I'd get this thing up to 55 mile an hour and I was, it was a, I was scared to death. Now, I'll run this anytime we make a modification, whatever. I get over on 80, over Donner Summit, in the truck lanes, doing 70 mile an hour, turn around at Truckee, truck lanes all the way back at 70 and it's no hands, one finger. It just and it, it takes a lot to get a project to drive like that. You know, over all the years, it just keeps getting better and better and better and better. It almost doesn't make sense. It almost does. One of the last things we did is took the Detroit locker out of the rear and put an air locker in. We've been telling them that for years. 
And I mean, that is a huge difference. Um, but is there anything else? Uh, I mean, the project never stops. So if you see this at a car show and you've already seen it before, you got to stop by and look at it and look for the new stuff because every day you're doing something different. But is there anything else you're going to do? What's your next step on this? I think, think just we're going to enjoy it. Me and, you know, my kid, we're just going to get out. We're going to try to hit some trails this year or in 2023 and get on down the road. I mean, and, and let me tell you, he's not going to stop messing with it. He may say that, but, you know, I know everybody. I know what's on everybody's Christmas list. And I know you still have a really long Christmas list. I got a few Bronco. little things. Come yeah. on. Well, one of the things we never really talked about is some of you guys who've seen this Bronco know that this thing has been in primer for the last eight years. Um, and this is something that we like to tell our customers about and that I want to let you guys know about too. So when it's a work in, in progress, and let me tell you, this is a work in progress and always has been, um, one of the biggest mistakes is to take your vehicle and get it painted first. So if you say you're going to bring a painted vehicle to my shop and then have us build it, we're going to say no. So John did this the right way. So he had this in primer for the last eight years. And every time he changed something, opened up a wheel well, added louvers, uh, trimmed the rear fenders, you know, brought the flares up, all the work he's done to it. Uh, when it's in primer, you can just stop, go back to it, cut metal, well, go back together and reprimer it. Um, and all you, uh, the uh, bought not built guys, as they, as they like to say, uh, you, this will give John just a little bit more street credit. So. This vehicle right here, this gray paint job, which is a great paint job, just a tiny bit of orange peel. So John did this in his garage and in his driveway. So all you guys that say that your project isn't attainable, you can't paint it, you can't build it. Um, he's out there with an airless painting this thing, you know, in his driveway. And I mean, the paint job looks amazing. Uh, I remember when I was in high school, I couldn't afford a paint job. So what I do, I painted my Chevelle, you know, right, right in the garage at my mom and dad's house. So. This is what we really like to see on a project, and I want to see you guys go after your projects like this too. Um, I think it's about time I take it for a ride though, so I'm gonna get in this bad boy. I haven't driven it since the big motor and the automatic, so we'll see how she goes. Let's see if I can get in this bastard. Oh, woo, not bad. All right, now, steering wheel hanging. So he's got this little red mark right here. And uh, you line the red mark up and boom. That way the wheel's centered while you're going down the road. We'll get our seat belts on and uh, get headed out. All right, well, here we go. This is like a, a jet cockpit. You know, you got main fan, got trans fan. We got ignition to on now. We got push button start. Oh man, woo! I can't wait. Steering wheel's tight.
Well, just like classic WFO form, looks like I broke it. Uh, John told me to drive it like I stole it, so I did, and I kept it to the wood. Apparently, the water pump on the new engine, the gasket didn't go on so good, because uh, look at that, she's bleeding. Big wet line all the way down the parking lot, so here he is, ready to take it home. We got a real cool, you know, 12 rigs of Christmas video, and it's got to stay here. We got to put a water pump gasket in it. My bad. Ho, ho, ho. Following day. My God, this thing is awesome. Uh, anybody needs to feel that kind of horsepower under your foot, you know. I think he might have uh, slipped up. It might be 600 at the crank, maybe about 350, 400 at the tires, but it's everything uh, as expected. Um, well, this pretty much uh, sums it up for our WFO's 12 rigs of Christmas, and uh, probably not a better vehicle to go out on the last day because you'll never find this again, and it just speaks Christmas cheer and excitement and fun. So uh, until next year, see ya. Merry Christmas, everybody.